Hi have a nice day. Today I am going to discuss the story of how diamonds make their way to the surface as a fascinating journey that spans millions of years. From deep within the Earth's mantle to the hands of jewelry enthusiasts, this remarkable process involves geological forces, intricate chemistry, and human ingenuity. This startup note delves into the captivating journey of diamonds, shedding light on the geological processes, mining techniques, and the broader implications for both science and the jewelry industry. How Diamonds Make Their Way to the Surface A diamond is forever. That iconic slogan, coined for a highly successful advertising campaign in the 1940s, sold the gemstones as a symbol of eternal commitment and unity. But our new research, carried out by researchers in a variety of countries and published in Nature, suggests that diamonds may be a sign of breakup too. Of Earth's tectonic plates, that is. It may even provide clues to where is best to go looking for them. Diamonds, being the hardest naturally occurring stones, require intense pressures and temperatures to form. These conditions are only achieved deep within the Earth. So how do they get from deep within the Earth? up to the surface. Diamonds are carried up in molten rocks, or magmas, called kimberlites. Until now, we didn't know what process caused kimberlites to suddenly shoot through the Earth's crust having spent millions, or even billions, of years stowed away under the continents. Supercontinent cycles. Most scientists agreed, however, that kimberlite eruptions occurred in sync with the supercontinent cycle, a recurring pattern of landmass formation and fragmentation that has occurred over billions of years of Earth's history. However, the exact mechanisms behind this relationship are debated. Some researchers have argued that kimberlite magmas exploit the wounds in Earth's tectonic plates that open up during rifting, whilst others blamed mantle plumes. Huge upwellings of hot magma from the core mantle boundary nearly 3,000 kilometers beneath Earth's surface. Both ideas, however, are not without their problems. For one, the lower, thicker part of the tectonic plate, known as the lithosphere, is incredibly strong and stable, so fractures can easily penetrate to allow magmas to flush through. Likewise, most kimberlites don't appear to exhibit the characteristic flavor of mantle plumes. Besides, plumes are so hot that they should stimulate intense melting on the underside of the continents. Yet kimberlite formation typically involves very low degrees, less than 1% of mantle melting. If plumes play an important role, it's likely to be indirect. Maybe they seed the upper mantle with super deep diamonds, and or warm the lithosphere enough that it can eventually rupture. In contrast, kimberlite formation is thought to involve exceedingly low degrees of mantle rock melting, often less than 1%. So, another mechanism is needed. Our study offers a possible resolution to this long-standing conundrum. We deployed statistical analysis, including machine learning, an application of artificial intelligence, to forensically examine the link between continental breakup and kimberlite volcanism. The results of our global study show the eruptions of most kimberlite volcanoes occurred 20 to 30 million years after the tectonic breakup of Earth's continents. Furthermore, our regional study targeting the three continents where most kimberlites are found, Africa, South America and North America, supported this finding. It also added a major clue. Kimberlite eruptions tend to gradually migrate from the continental edges to the interiors over time at a rate that is uniform across the continents. Volcanic eruptions. Around the planet there are a wide range of volcanic eruptions. Some are effusive, consisting of runny lava flows, while other are highly explosive, sending massive columns of volcanic gases and ash tens of thousands of feet into the atmosphere. Yet, despite their differences, more than 99% of the planet's eruptions produce volcanic rock compositions, rock types that nicely fit on this diagram that shows composition with less explosive eruptions, generally originating from less silica-rich magma and more silica-rich magmas, aiding in the generating of more explosive eruptions due in part to their higher viscosities. However, throughout the planet's history there have been some highly unusual volcanoes that have produced compositions so strange that they do not fit anywhere on this diagram. One of these differing composition volcanoes involves a rock type that is so rare it has. Depending on the scientist you ask either not erupted or only erupted at one site on the entire planet in the last 20 million years. 
This strange rock type is generally involved in highly explosive eruptions that create several hundred foot wide craters with a prominent crater rim instead of a volcanic cone. But most importantly, the rock in question known as kimberlite is of great economic interest. Kimberlite is unlike its more silica-rich counterparts, it can often contain diamonds. As a whole, kimberlites are quite strange for a number of reasons. For example, they generally do not contain any of the two most common minerals on the planet, feldspar and quartz. Instead, they often have less than 30% by weight silica, which is far lower than of most magma varieties. Individual specimens often contain olivine which in its gem form is known as peridot, garnets, and on rare occasions diamonds among other minerals. Also, when looking at known kimberlite deposits you might notice something strange. They largely cratons occur in areas of the world have not produced any recent volcanic activity in locations such as Brazil, eastern Canada, and most famously South Africa. This is not merely a coincidence, but rather a feature of kimberlite eruptions. They generally only occur in highly stable segments of the Earth's crust known as cratons which have uniformly old basement rock, typically more than 600 million years old. Cratons generally have unusually thick segments of lithosphere, which aids in the generation of diamonds. There, at a depth of 150 to 200 kilometers, elemental carbon due to intense pressure and heat slowly becomes diamond. How Kimberlite Carries Diamonds Kimberlite magma begins in the mantle, slowing rising shallower into the crust at unusually high speeds due to their gas-rich composition typically with a high level of carbon dioxide. Along their path upwards, the magma sometimes grabs diamonds deep underneath cratons and carries them upwards. Moving through the crust, the speed of the kimberlite intrusion continually increases, often surpassing a speed of 40 miles per hour, generating earthquakes along the way. In a matter of hours, perhaps even time spans an order of magnitude shorter, the kimberlite intrusion reaches the surface, exploding in a powerful and highly explosive eruption. While a kimberlite eruption has never been witnessed in recorded history, it is speculated that such an eruption would create a Plinian-like eruption column, possibly reaching far above 50,000 feet in height. As pyroclastic flows race across the landscape, the eruption continues. After the eruption finally ends, what remains is a several hundred foot to one mile wide crater in the ground that has a raised rim on its side being known as a tough ring. Although diamonds can be ejected onto the surface during these powerful eruptions, the vast majority of deposits mined today represent highly eroded segments of a kimberlite pipe where the modern surface level was originally located at a depth of several kilometers at the time of the eruption. Not all kimberlite pipes have diamonds, however, just because a kimberlite pipe exists does not mean it contains diamonds, and even if it does, the odds of containing gem-grade diamonds are even lower. The vast majority of kimberlite pipes do not contain any diamonds, much like the Buell Park Kimberlite Pipe in Arizona. Diamonds may or may not be forever, but our work shows that new ones have been repeatedly created over long periods in the history of our planet. I hope you liked the article, thanks for watching, please watch, subscribe and comments, stay connected for more.